and so I met this guy at a bar, went from one bar to another, went to his house, and I was into stealing weapons, and he, I was trying to steal one of his weapons, and he caught me, and I shot him with his own gun. And at the time, you know, when I heard that, with at that time my thinking was pretty bad. So, um, you know, a lot of the F words were coming out of my mind and out of my mouth. And I didn't give a care about society or the world anymore because I was looking at the death penalty. So, you know what, I don't care what I do now. Basically, the concept of life was, you know, I got life sentence, so what are you going to do to me? I mean, you do, I've done wrote my life, so why do I need to change now? So, the, so there's no reason to change. You know, some people do, and I eventually did, but at that moment, you're mad at yourself, mad at the world because you're under the influence of drug, and like most of us that commit those kinds of crimes, it's everybody else's fault except for ourselves, and I had that same thinking at the time. So basically I spent, uh, I would just say rounding off to 25, I spent three months shy of 25 calendar years, Dave for Dave, 25 in the system. Society's changed, you know, the way people think has changed. <laughs> Uh, the way things have done have changed. Uh, like when I first got home, I was with my wife in the car. She said, let's get some gas. So I'm I said, well, give me some money to go pay the gas. She said, no, we do a card. And I said, what is that? And, you know, that was real confusing to me to figure out, you know, swiping the card at a gas tank. I'm like, okay, well, this is different. So that was confusing. To be honest, it really felt weird. So. Generally, after the third month of incarceration, you get a, an attitude of, I don't need nobody to tell me what to do anymore. Kind of like a little baby, you know, leave me alone, I can do this on my own. Uh, and I did experience that emotion after about that third month that I don't need you to tell me how to operate this card anymore. I don't need you to, tell, you to control my money. And I was able to capture that. And it was a strong emotion. Met my wife in, while I was incarcerated. I met a lady who became my wife of 13 years while I was in prison. So she waited on me for 13 years. And she helped me probably more than anybody else, you know, keep a good track of my mind and keep me responsible. And I told my wife, and she said, well, let me come visit you first. And I said, no, because I'd afraid I'd get a butt chewing, you know. So she said, no, I just want to come visit you before you have to take care of something. So she doesn't. I asked her, I said, well, get my little butt chewing out of the way. What are you? And she said, no, I don't, I don't live in there. I don't understand what you have to do with She said, but I do have a question for you. And I said, what's that question? She said, I just I want to know, did I marry a man or did I marry an inmate? That's all I want to know. And I thought, wow, you know, I got mad again because I wanted to be an inmate. The inmate was go retaliate. But being a man that's free was let that stuff go and be a husband, be a dad. That's what I really wanted now. And I let that situation go and didn't bother me none anymore. And the, the irony of it was three months later, the governor commuted my life sentence. And had, he, had I gotten into it and been an inmate, probably I wouldn't be having this conversation with you today because I'd have probably hurt him or he'd hurt me and I'd have got a misconduct for fighting and I'd have lost my parole hearing and all that other stuff. So It is what it is. And so I talk about it simply because I want people to try not to make those same mistakes. I was involved in the Speak Out program while I was incarcerated, talking to juveniles about drugs and alcohol. So unfortunately, you had to talk about your crime a lot. And uh, not because you were bragging, but you wanted to convey to, the, to other people that this is the end result of drugs and alcohol for some of us. If we're not careful, we may not all go kill somebody, but uh, I was under the influence of drugs when I committed my crime. And so uh, nowhere prior to that incident did I wake up that morning and say, you know what, I want to get drunk tonight, and tonight I'm going to kill someone. You know, so that wasn't my dream. It wasn't in my thought whatsoever, but it happened. So.